here we are 10 years after you've just told me and our other viewers about your experiences. What's your advice today? What's your advice to a gay person, an LGBTQ person who is considering enlisting or commissioning in the military? What do you tell them? Do you try to reinforce them or just what, are, what, what do you say when you're asked, hey, what's your opinion, should I join? Josh, you do a lot with student veterans. What you are you asked that question? Yes, <laughs> the answer is yes. I get asked that question quite a lot. I think it, oftentimes I ask them lots of questions um, before I give my take on <laughs> the um, before I give the advice. I think some of the questions that I ask is for them to ask themselves questions around what is their why. Like, why do they really want to join? Oftentimes, it is a path out of poverty is a path to citizenship. It's a path to all of these pieces that individually they're looking for. Um, I have them do a lot of soul seeking if it's a little more abstract, like I had sort of back in the day. Um, but more than anything, I have, particularly if it's a person who is multiply marginalized in a number of ways, if they're, if they're someone who is um, a person of color, if they're someone who is gender variant or gender diverse, if they're someone who doesn't have a strong support system otherwise that they need to be critical of their choice in terms of um, they're going into a system that is deeply imperfect that may be improving but also they're in a closed system in terms of the power dynamic is very clear in terms of what they can and cannot do and it is not a choice they can get out of easily <laughs> or in a good positive way until you complete your term of service so those are the kinds of things that I kind of talk to them about, um, is asking them a lot of questions in terms of what is their sort of impetus. There have been plenty of folks that I have worked with uh, who have been students who have, have, in, you know, have joined very often as officers after completing a bachelor's degree uh, in the context of me working at an undergraduate institution. Um, but those are the kind of things that we talk about is really about what is their intention, what is their about choice of branch, about how they want to go about doing their career, what do they want to do, what job have they done, how many veterans have they talked to, how many active uh, how many um, active duty folks have they talked to so they get a really clear idea, just like advising them in any other career choice around having very clear eyed uh, and informed opinions about what they're about to get themselves into because it's not a um, it's not a casual choice. Well, those students who ask you for advice uh, apparently get sound advice from you. That th those questions that you ask them seem uh, very relevant. Joseph, what about you? And you've you certainly gone to to college campuses after being discharged, uh, and I assume that in your current role as a candidate, you might still be asked about should I join the military? What's your answer? Um, I mean, I, I would never hesitate to encourage somebody to enter the service, uh, even given all the many challenges that I faced. Um, it is, you know, being a Marine is one of the proudest things that I um, that I can say that I am. Uh, and it it definitely shaped who I am. You'll see in my campaign and my messaging and my vision, um, our core values are right there. And in fact, in the essay that I uh, contributed to your book, um, it actually was called uh, something to the effect of re um, don't ask, don't tell is contrary to um, to our values, right? I guess you're going to find it now. But yes. uh, yeah, so, um, uh, so, you know, the, the policy let me down, uh, but even through my advocacy, you know, 10 years ago, I always stress that the issue was the policy, not um, not the service, not our country. Um, those two things I've, I've always been very proud of. I think the question I get asked more often than not is um, when they when I think they should come out. Um, I think that's a question I get a lot, um, particularly those who want to enter the Marine Corps, and even more so the, uh, the Marine Corps Officer Corps, which is much smaller and will recycle you out much quicker at, at OCS. Um, and um, I think that 
the reality is that it's it's completely dependent on the individual um, and their comfort level, right? It's like anything else. Um, if they want to, there is definitely a huge relief to putting all your cards on the table from the beginning so that you're not questioning the strength of your friendships and relationships. Um, and uh, and um, you don't have that constant fear and insecurity of will things change if they were to find out. I didn't really feel like I had that option when I went to OCS simply because uh, I had a huge marker on me already from having fought the repeal and I wanted to just get through it. Um, but even that having been said, um, you know, my partner at the time did show up to graduation. It was a gift from a close friend who flew him out there. Um, I was too afraid I wasn't going to graduate to tell him to buy a ticket or anything. Um, you were there. So you remember, um, and once he was there, I, you know, I very happily, you know, was appropriately affectionate with him. And, and, um, you know, it was kind of one of those things that, Whoever sees, sees. I've made it. I have my EGA. Um, so I think that's the question I get asked most. Um, you know, if you're in a position to be out from the beginning, I think it's probably best for your career because you don't have to double guess anything. I think what I would stress most is that they should just know their rights entering into the service so that whenever they're comfortable to be out or if they are not out and um, they're not being treated fairly, uh, they, they know um, what rights they have.